All right, so for this one, actually, there will be a one second here. Uh, hmm. Not sure why that's happening. Okay, there it is. So for this one, <coughs> there will be a, a set of base curves that I'll be giving to you uh, in a sample file that will be on the, we'll talk about that in class. It'll be on the Dropbox ready for download. Uh, let me just turn this thing on. You can kind of see it. As you can see, it uh, it kind of goes off our grid a little bit, and it's it's uh, you know again it, it just shows how the how the overall form of this of the terminal kind of snakes through the city and thins out a little bit toward the end there, um, and that distance is critical a part because that's actually one of our input parameters that determines what those trusses look like, what their dimensions are, and how they kind of sh shift a little bit proportionally. All right, so uh, we can turn that off because we're going to kind of end up redrawing it in some ways, just using points and stuff. Um, so let's get started. Okay, first thing is, is to isolate each one of those curves separate from one another using the list component. And I'm going to zoom in and hit that little plus, and there I go. So I'm, I've now got two outputs, one being the left, the other one being the right curve. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is break this left curve down into a series of points that I'm going to use to determine how many structural trusses or sections I have um, in, the in the overall form, for the overall form. Um, so I'm going to go to curve, divide, divide curve. I'm going to divide this, this one on the left here, the inside curve. And I'll describe that, I'll explain why in just a minute. Um, and then I'm going to uh, change the end value to something like 35, because I believe there's around 35 or 36 sections in the building. So I'm going to do that, give it a bit of density, and give it a good kind of span, a uh, more realistic span between the sections, like we kind of see in the overall structure. Yeah. Uh, now the next thing is to, instead of dividing this curve in the same number of times, I, I don't know if I can do that because this curve is a different length, and that one's a different length. If I connect the dots across um, using another division, I, I, don't, I don't think I end up with um, curves that are perfectly perpendicular to either of these curves. They, they kind of, they're at a sort of a diagonal angle. And you can test that on your own if you like. And the reason is, is that, again, this curve is different than that one. They're not drawn, they're not drawn as perfect offsets. Uh, and so what we have to do is be a little more careful because we want the spans between each section to actually be consistent. Okay, not change, um, as opposed to kind of tapering inward like you would get if you were to divide this. So instead, what we're going to do is just kind of project these points and project them across. Um, but we're going to project them in a direction that's always perpendicular to the tangent at each one of these points, right? So a tangent direction is basically one that's going to kind of come off this curve in a direction that continues its trajectory. Uh, we can rotate that 90 degrees to find a perpendicular direction for every single point on this curve. So let's do it. Um, this curve division component already gives us our tangent vector. So all we got to do is rotate them. If you want to see them, in case you're curious, we can go to display up top, grab this little component here with the, the orange arrows. Uh, these are going to be our anchors. Our vectors are actually our T values. And now what we're going to see if we zoom in is a series of arrows that are being drawn, okay, at the tangent, uh, along the tangential direction of each one of those points, which uh, is going to look like they're in line with the curve. And in fact, because this is a pretty high resolution, they actually are a little bit. If we were to extend these vectors a little bit, you would see that they can keep going a bit. And I'll just do that quickly. You don't necessarily have to follow along here. Uh, but it's an amplitude component, and I can, I can just kind of extend those just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. Yeah, so now you can kind of see, right, the tangential lines, um, the tangential vectors being being drawn out accurately until it goes straight again, right? So whatever there's a curvature, you're going to see a little bit of that. Okay, uh, I'm going to delete that because I know that it's it's fine and I know that it works. Uh, so I'm going to instead uh, go to vector. In the vector box, I find the rotate vector component, and I'm going to rotate these t's, uh, the the vectors coming out of the t. The rotation axis is our z axis, right? Because we're rotating um, in, a, in a planar direction along the xy plane. So we can just type in z. So I can double click in there, search for my z, uh, my z vector again, double click, type in z. Your unit z vector is going to be down at the bottom there. 
and uh, the angle. Uh, the angle I'm going to set in degrees because I can think more clear to think in degrees as it is in radians. So I'm going to right click on that A input and uh, change that to degrees. And uh, then I'm just going to use a panel for parameters panel. And I'm going to type in negative 90 and, and, and do that. Uh, now, if, if this is in the right direction, which it should be, uh, if it's not, the projection won't work. If it's in the right direction, the projection will actually touch uh, that curve that's on the other side there, and it will form a new set of points for us that are perpendicular to all of our originals. Uh, so I'm going to go to Vector, and under the point box, there is a project, po uh, project point component, and I'm going to project these original points in the direction of this vector onto the geometry of that other curve. So I'm going to go back to that list item and plug that in like that. And now if you look at the top view, you'll see that um, the points are all drawn and they're equidistant from one another. So to keep our span between our trusses um, more or less intact. I mean, there is still going to be a bit of tapering, I guess, that, that occurs. Um, but this will be a more of an accurate version than, than just the, uh, the connecting of the dots. Okay, so I have my projected points, and um, I'll use these to begin. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these points as the start and end points for each one of those trusses. Right? Again, going back to this guy here. So that point there is our left points, and this one here is our right points. We're not going to deal with this little angle here. We're going to ignore that for now. Um, but we are. the next step is going to be to start drawing the left one. Because in the way that I've set this up, and again, I don't know exactly how Foster's team did it, but or sorry, Grimshaw's team did it. Um, Oh yeah, I misspoke at the beginning. This is not a Foster project. This is a Grimshaw project. Uh, but anyway, uh, how their team originally did it um, is might be different. But what I'm going to do is is use this leftmost arch uh, arc here to um, to control this one in, in a way. And I'm going to uh, set this center point using an equilateral triangle here. And I'm going to use that angle that's set by that that rightmost uh, side of the equilateral triangle to find my center point of this one. And go to that later. Uh, but first, let's draw this left one, and we'll draw this equilateral, and we'll kind of get these arcs moving along. Okay. And again, what we're trying to do is develop a statement here that we can use to uh, adjust um, in order to make changes to the form as necessary based on the outer curve, the outer curves that the, uh, uh, that the site has. Um, yep. So let's see here. Okay, first things first, uh, I need a line to go across because I need a parameter to determine where that inflection point occurs. Right? I need to figure out where that point is in space, and to do that, I'm just going to draw it across first this way as a distance, and I'm going to lift it. And, and that's going to be the way I'm going to find that point. It's easier to, to do it in two axes like this than to draw it diagonally um, because you don't really know what that angle needs to be, so it's, it's good to just kind of do it, do it like this. So uh, first thing is to draw that line. So I'm going to go to curve, line, and we'll start connecting the dots here. Okay project points and our, our original base points. And we've drawn those across. And now we can evaluate those lines to find our, the, at least the, the, direct, uh, the, the location along the, the, the bottom axis of our inflection point. So I'm going to use the curve, evaluate curve component like we've used before. Um, and I'm going to grab a slider, a default slider from the parameters tab, and just pop that into the T input. And because these curves are already parameterized, meaning that they can be described between 0 and 1 uh, computationally, we could just kind of scrub across here and find a point. Uh, now, this is a, you know, it's an abstract numeric parameter that we'll use to sketch this building out. Uh, if this needs to be a perfect, uh, perfect dimensional variable, we would need to kind of change this up a little bit so we can actually evaluate that dimension based on our units. But because we're in inches and because we're just sketching out the building form, we don't really need to worry about that right now. We just want to set the, again, we just want to set the geometric description of this so we can um, work on it again um, in later phases of the project and kind of use that to our advantage. Um, so, okay, so the, the next thing is to move it up in space. Like I said, we want to move it upward. And uh, now I can, s I can move this thing to anywhere I want. Um, but remember that we've got, a, a changing value here. We have a, a, a changing distance between the points. So the width is going to taper to thin to wide. If we want the height to be proportional against its length, we need to set the height 
relative to that length. If it's just a external parameter like a number um, that's not at all related, uh, you'll end up with kind of a totally different proportion of, of arcs over here as, as you do over here. But we want to try to maintain that proportional shift all the way down. So uh, again, you know, if we look at this, this is a main parameter, one of the major parameters of this of this description. So it's important to use that kind of length you know, in our model. So we'll do that. Uh, so let's measure the length. So curve, curve length. Let's get that number. And there it is. Uh, we can now divide this, right? Because this length is too long. We obviously don't want to make a uh, make these arches as long as they are, or as high as they are long. That that's not uh, how it's constructed. Um, but let's let's do that in a sec. Let's go over. Let's double click. Type in move, and uh, we want to move these points upward a bit. Uh, double click. Type in z. Grab our z axis to describe where the where the move is going. And, um, and now we want to give it a numeric value, but instead of just doing this, because if I do that again, it's going to be way too high. So our arch will be like you know, way over here. Um, I want to control this a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to do something simple, and I'm just going to divide it. So let's divide these values by something that we could change. A simple number, let's say in this case, 5. Okay, so I grab the panel, as you can see, like in the video. And I, I'm dividing this now by, um, by just a number, an arbitrary number that I can use to kind of set that proportion a little bit more visually accurate. And, uh, you know, uh, five we'll start with. We can change that later after we start drawing our arcs. Uh, but for now, we'll leave it. All right, so you can see now if I change the, the length of this, like if I were to move, you know, one of these uh, curves, either inward or outward, all of this would update accordingly. The height would actually change. And if we look at our side view, you should probably start seeing that already, actually, is that, yeah. So the heights are now being gradually decreased as the width decreases. That's good. Okay, so we're on the right track. That's what we think. Okay. Okay, now to set uh, the beginnings of our, to find the center point of our arc, uh, we need to set this, this first edge. So let's look at the Grimshaw's description. So we have this line here, right, that we can actually use to figure out where that point is with a simple equation. So I'll show you that in a second. So we're going to draw this line First, we're going to draw a line perpendicular to this to be a length that would cause that would cause this all to be equilateral. All right, so let's draw our line first, and let's go to curve line like we did before. The um, the endpoints of all of these are of course the division points because we're dealing with that side, right? So that's a that's our division. And um, I'm just going to move all this stuff down so that I have some space to work here. And then our other side is going to be the move. That's the one we just drew. Okay. And now we've drawn all those lines across to connect the dots. Um, now we need to find the center point. We could evaluate that curve again. And we could grab a slider and drop in uh, a value of 0 0.5. So I'm going to double click and just type in 0 0.5, hit the little green button, and I found the center. Um, now, this is the, the origin point, basically, from, from this line that I'll use to draw a perpendicular line from it. We know that we've, we've done something similar to this already. We, we did that over here. All of these lines are drawn perpendicular. Let's, let's do that again. Uh, so we can use the tangent direction here, and we can rotate it. So let's uh, double-click, type in uh, rotate, and one of these are going to be the vector rotate. Okay, so that's like the, in my screen, it's the uh, fifth one up. And that's the vector I want to rotate. The axis now, we've got to be careful with this part. The axis of rotation is not going to be one of our Euclidean axes. It's not going to be x, y, or z because we have this curvature here. Right? So the axis of rotation has to be perpendicular to each one of these planes that we've drawn out here. Right? Uh, this line is essentially drawn out in a plane. We need a perpendicular direction to that. And we know we've got it already. Um, from our, our former evaluate component, right? That's what these directions are. That's going to be our rotation angle, our uh, axes. So I'm just going to uh, go to parameters, type in, or grab one of these vector parameters here. Pop those in because I think it's a little easier sometimes to work across your screen by, by copying and, and sort of uh, re, you know, 
redrawing or repopulating that data a little bit and um, bringing it into the screen a little bit deeper so that I can kind of work that way. That's going to be our rotation vector. And um, let's change this to degrees. And let's type in this time positive 90 to see if that see if that's what we need. All right. And again, if it goes in the wrong direction, we can always change it. Um, but for now, let's work. And uh, what I'm going to do now is draw a line of a length that I don't, uh, I, I'm not going to draw a line between two points because I don't have that point yet. I'm actually going to draw the line in order to find that other point. So I need to have that SDL curve, right, this to start the direction length curve. So I go to curve, primitive, and line SDL, okay, the one that with the arrow. The start point for all the lines are these evaluated points, okay, so that's our center point here. Our direction is the vector we've just drawn. And the length now um, needs to be determined. But if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that I'm starting to draw a line of one unit perpendicular to each of those curves. And I think if I go to the right view here, we should be able to see that. It's going to be a little hard, but I, you see it right here. You know, this thing kind of curves back in space, so it gets a little confusing in this view. But you'll see that they are appearing to be perfectly perpendicular. Uh, now, how do we determine our length? Well, uh, in this case, what we need to do is kind of set a an equation for this. And, if, and this is only because I'm putting out in the outset that I want to make this an equilateral triangle. I don't know for sure if Grimshaw did, but, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make that equilateral no matter what. Um, and I'm going to use that as, a, as just a, you know, as part of my description. Uh, so how do I do that? I can first measure the length of our lines here, measure these lines, lengths, because I need that in my equation in order to find out um, how far that needs to go to make these other edges the same length, I need to know what the length is. So I can go to curve, length, okay, grab that length, value. Uh, now I'm going to introduce something new to you, which is the custom um, function component. So I'm going to go to maths, script, and evaluate. And that's going to allow me to uh, drop in a custom uh, equation here. And I'm going to delete y because if I zoom in and delete y, I don't need y as an input. I actually only have one input, uh, and that's going to be my x input. My equation now, now I can do two things. I can double click in here and I can write that equation. Uh, but to make it clear for you, I'm going to put it in a panel so that it can be on screen for us at all times. Um, now the equation for this is written like so. Okay, so it's parentheses x times sqrt, so the square root of 3 divided by 2. Okay, so I'll leave that up on screen for a second. x times square root 3 divided by 2. All right, and we can plug that into f. And we're going to get a value out of that. Okay, we're going to get a numeric value out of that, which should give us mathematically the right length in order to draw our equilateral triangle. Okay, and now we've got a length here that's our endpoint here now is going to be the center point for our circle that we'll use to create our truss. Uh, I keep calling it an arc, but actually what it is is a is a kind of a is a subset of a circle because uh, we're going to draw it as one. Uh, we could draw it as an arc, but I kind of like in this example to draw it as a circle. So uh, now I can just go to my curve, find my endpoints here, like that. And the endpoint is going to be our center point, right? One of our major parameters. Okay. Um, now I'm going to draw a circle in here to start drawing, you know, to start drawing the, the bottom most arc, this one here, the bottom most arc, which is uh, set using that center point. The other one is a different kind of offset, which is set using a tangent from here, but we can do that later. Um, so the first one is uh, this one. Okay, so I'm going to go to circle, go to curve, primitive, circle, and see what this thing needs. Okay, we, we, we can find our radius uh, using the, the length uh, of these lines. <coughs> Um, but, you know, of course, it's going to get confused because I have a certain number of things coming in and I'm drawing it from the origin. Now, before we start plugging this thing in, we can just go ahead and do that just for the sake of it. 
Um, you can see now that by default, I'm drawing that in the wrong axes, right? Uh, I need to draw this thing up, right, in the uh, x, z axis. So I got to give this thing the right plane, because by default, this plane is going to be the y, z, the y, x, y. So what I need to do, again, now I can't just kind of plug in an x, y plane here. It's because it has to be relative to all this, all the angles in space. So I need to draw a plane that's perpendicular to each one of these points that we just found, each one of these points. Okay, so we can do that by going into vector. There's a component that says plane normal. All right. Uh, our origin are these, and our our perpendicular vectors are the ones that we grabbed from the other side of the screen. Uh, these here, sorry, I lost it myself. So it's these ones here. All right. So these are the ones that we grabbed to do the rotation. I'm going to put a little tag on this, uh, and I'm going to use that now here. And I'm going to put that into my D input. And as you can see, what we've done now is we've reoriented all of those circles to be relative to the plane at which all of those construction lines have been drawn. Okay, because we basically have a plane now that's perpendicular to all the points, uh, you know, in space that have been derived from these two curves that twist uh, and plant. And if I zoom in, I guess if I find a view that allows me to isolate a little bit, yeah. You can see now that I've drawn that, that circle directly through these two points because I used this length as a way to describe. It's equilateral, right? So this length from that point to that point is the exact same length as this original chord. And because of that, I draw, right? I had no problem drawing that circle through those points. Again, other ways to do it. I like the equilateral version. It's clean. It uses numbers and less things. And um, I know that it works. Now, the thing is, is we don't need the entire circle. Of course, we only need the, um, the arc that's being, you know, the kind that's being intersected. So this original line, the line that we, we have up top here, that chord, we can use that to actually, remember this one, we can use this to actually uh, intersect and kind of split, if you will, or kind of slice that circle away so that we only left with the thing that we want. Uh, in order to do that, I'm going to go to intersect. Um, in the physical box, you can see the curve, curve. Uh, I'm going to plug in into my B the circles, and into the A input, I'll just kind of plug in the lines that we've drawn before. And I'm going to put this up here so we can see that. Yeah. And you're going to see that, you know, um, we have a set of points that are being redrawn over the top of the old ones. Uh, but this is new data for us because here we have now the output of T, T parameters. Okay. The T parameters are important because without them, we can't split that circle into two pieces. Um, that's why we had to use these intersection, this intersection component, regardless of whether or not we already had those points located in space. We just didn't have the data that we needed in order to do the next step, which is to shatter the curve. So go to curve, division, shatter. The curves we're shattering are the circles, and these B parameters are the ones we want um, because it's the parameters that are drawn up along the B input, which is the circle, right? So. Uh, that should be related, right? These two things should come from the same data uh, set, basically. And now, um, if we turn off these original circles in terms of their preview, and turn this preview off as well for now, because our output here is going to be a set of two things. We only want to see one of them. And um, uh, let's go over to sets, and let's grab this little list item component and pop that in there. So by default, it looks like it's drawing the Oh, uh, I think I might have an error here, sorry. Um, I think I need to graft this. Yes, okay. So I was kind of mismatching my data, and because of that, I wasn't able to actually select uh, the thing that I wanted. I was giving it a little bit too much. So anyway, uh, I had to um, break this thing into uh, a data set that kind of matched uh, its structure, right? So you can now if I hover over this, I get a series of branches on the left from 0 to 35, and that's exactly the same here. Um, what I'm now able to do is kind of select and deselect pieces that I don't want. And if I, um, what's coming out of this is actually the larger of the two arcs that I, uh, that I, so I don't want this one. I actually want the next index in. So I'm going to set that integer to one. And in that case, what I've done is I've only now selected the, the top chunk that we wanted. And this is the, the bottom of the, uh, the left truss piece in the structure. Now, I don't know if I exactly, now, later on down the line, when we start 
changing some of the parameters a bit uh, in order to kind of change the form, uh, you'll see that there's probably going to be an error. And I'm just going to kind of nip that now um, and kind of resort all these curves that are coming out of here um, by their length so that I know for sure I'm only selecting the one I want. Um, you can not do this and test it later to see if you get the error. And the error would basically be that half of these maybe are the sh short ones and the other half are the long ones. Uh, sometimes the data gets a little bit mixed up based on how you change things and uh, you want to make sure that that's not a problem for you. So I'm going to introduce just a simple way of sorting uh, geometry, uh, things that are coming out of geometry by, their, by some numeric value that's related to it. Uh, so I'm going to check the length, so I'm going to go to curve, length. I'm going to put this over here for now. Uh, and so I'm going to I'm gonna dimension basically or kind of measure each, each one of those. And then I'm going to go to sets grab my sort list component. Now, K input is going to be, and you can look at it, you see uh, uh, on the left there, it's a 0 0.1. That's going to give you an indication for what kind of data it needs. It's going to be numbers. So that's, let's sort those numbers from high to low, sorry, from low to high. So all the lower numbers will always be the first in the list and all the higher numbers will always be last in the list. So it's already sorting our, informa our, our data. Now what we need to do is sort our curves based on that, right? Uh, so we took all of our, our, our geometry now and we're gonna resort them so that the first one in the list is always the shortest. And then if I do this, no matter what, um, and we have to change uh, this index back to zero. And now no matter what I do, it will always pick the smaller of the two, uh, which makes our solution set uh, much more accurate and impervious, I would say, to errors. Okay, uh, last step of this so that I can stay, again, organized, I'm going to color and display what we've just drawn as a white line so that I, I, I can kind of distinguish between our construction lines and what our, what our structure actually is. So I'm gonna go to display, grab this little uh, custom previewer and uh, turn that preview off and then go to parameters and grab this color swatch here and just uh, plug that in like that. Uh, now I, I've got that bottom, uh, you know, this the arc that's gonna make up the bottom part of that truss. I've got it colored so I can always, you know, find it easier and it helps a little bit as I work. Okay, so the next thing now, now we've got basically kind of 50% uh, of this left curve. So we got about a quarter of our structure drawn. And I'm gonna start drawing the, this, the other side now. Um, and I'm also going to finish off the left side uh, kind of uh, around the same time. Uh, so the thing I'm going to do now is just kind of, I'm going to take, this is our inflection point. Remember the one that we moved up in space over here? That's where the, the two truss pieces meet. And I'm going to, I'm going to bring this thing over. You know, again, this is kind of something I like to do to keep my file organized. So I make, sometimes I make copies of, of things that I've already drawn in order to just move them down the screen a little bit so that I have a whole nice area to work with and then I don't get as confused. And then I could uh, take this, I can tag it. I'm gonna call this an inflection point. You can call it something else if you like. Um, but I'm just gonna tag that uh, inflection point because it's an important one that I'll use uh, as an input to many other things. And that's why I wanna isolate it away so that you know I can always see where all those inputs are coming from later on down the line. Uh, before we get into the right side of the, the structure, let's, let's just kind of finish off the the top arc of this. And, and now this is not set by the same center point. Now I could find a center point somewhere along this and redraw the circle. Um, or I could um, just use our arc SCD that we used in the other example and just kind of kind of work that out uh, a little bit more visually, kind of eyeball it. And that's what we're gonna do for, for now. Uh, but let's do a couple things too before we get to that. We know we need to start an endpoint to that arc and we need uh, a vector for it. So I'm gonna start grabbing things from earlier on in the file and doing something similar to what I did over here, which is to isolate them away so that, again, I have them when I need them. Uh, one of the endpoints is going to be our original points from over here, okay? If I turn this on and off, you'll see. So I need, this is gonna be some of my endpoints uh, for that arc. So I'm gonna call this one endpoint one. So endpoint one. And I'm gonna grab another one of these point parameters and my projected points are endpoint two. Those will be the ones way over on this side and I'll use those a little bit later. 
but I'm just doing this to stay organized. All right. <coughs> now, we're, we're looking pretty good, so what I can start doing is drawing that arc, because I now I have my endpoint one identified, and I have my inflection point ready uh, for arc drawing. So I can go to curve, arc SED, go with the arrow. Uh, the start point on this one is actually going to be our inflection point, because we're going to use that side actually to draw the, uh, the tangential vector that's going to be important for the D input. The endpoint one then is going to be our endpoint there. So it's going to look like this. And now our D we have to determine, right? So we need a tangent vector. What's going to be our tangent vector? Um, so the tangent vector now is going to be, I want to draw this from here this other point on the right to that point and make that a tangent vector to produce this arc. Uh, let's look at the image for a minute to show you why I'm doing that. And maybe this is a better, mm, I don't really have a good image of it, but so if this is the right side, you know, if we reverse our mind a little bit because this image is in the other direction, that's a straight line that goes from the right point to the inflection. And if we continue that tangentially, it looks like it can be used to, to draw that first part of our, the top of our arc here. Now I'm going to draw this as a straight, as a, as a kind of a center line through this. I'm not going to bother modeling the, you know, this um, triangle section uh, for the sake of this exercise. It would be a bit longer. You will get the idea. Um, but the point is, is that this vector from that point to that point could probably be used to describe the shape of this one. Okay, so it's, it's kind of a nice, smooth continuation past that point. So I'm going to do that. And uh, so I'm going to go from this point to that point and draw that vector out. Uh, so, I'm gonna sh uh, so let's go over to vector. Uh, we're going to use the vector two point command for this. So that's down toward the bottom. And the start point of this is our endpoint two. Okay, endpoint two. And the, the B point or the endpoint of this is our inflection point. Let's plug that now into the D input, and you can see that we've started to draw an outer, this kind of outer, uh, the topmost center line for that truss side, right, for the side of the truss. Um, okay. Yeah, and, and if we go back just a bit, remember this, uh, this evaluation parameter, right, the one where we set the location of our inflection point. If we change that a little bit, you'll see that the the trusses are going to kind of change their proportions, right? Based on and everything's going to rotate nicely. You know, the uh, equilateral triangles being maintained, the offset between our our two our white arc and our red arc here are, is being maintained all the way across, meaning that the proportions are are very similar or exact. Um, and so we're in. We have a good start. I think we have pretty good. So we're, we're, we're making a lot of changes here using one input, um, and it's all proportional, right, regardless of the external constraints. Okay. Now we can debate whether or not this is the exact, right, you know, the right proportion for Waterloo. I, I don't exactly know, um, but the logic is very similar. Uh, so I'm going to leave this at around 2.25, and I think that looks decent enough to keep going. All righty. Uh, while we're over on this side of things, uh, we could also. So I've basically I've finished my left. Uh, finished the left truss. So I'm going to copy and paste that preview stuff that I did over on the other side there, and I'm going to bring that over, and I'm going to draw that that arc as white as well. So again, so I stay <coughs> pretty organized here. All right. So the other thing now is to just draw the straight line as the bottom of the right truss from there to there. That is just a straight line segment, so I can go to curve, line. Uh, it's essentially going to be a line drawn from our inflection to our endpoint two, okay? And I can just go ahead and hold shift and also include that within our preview, all right? Because that's actually part of our structure. Uh, there might be a subtle curve on this in reality, but again, for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to keep that straight. And, you know, because we use that, that tangential vector from this point to that point to control that arc, we have a very nice relationship geometrically from there. So if we follow our, our eye from all the way from there to there, and it just gradually nicely continues that archway. Very nice. 
Uh, otherwise, we'll make it a bubble here or something, and I don't think that would be as elegant. So we're, we're developing this pretty well. <coughs> okay, and we're going to go through a similar process. Center point here. Um, we're going to draw a perpendicular line down in that direction, but we're not going to make it equilateral because that has to be much longer. Okay, um, this goes off in a fur that goes off way further. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw this line, and we're going to allow it to naturally intersect with the vector that comes from that point to that one. So as I rotate this stuff around, this center point will update accordingly because it's related to not only that direction but also where it intersects with the point that we've just drawn as our center. <laughs> so it basically, it makes a relationship between the two center points that uh, cannot be changed. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we find our center point like we did previously. So we could uh, go to evaluate curve, so curve, evaluate curve, and we're gonna evaluate the line we just drew. That's the one, the one that we just drew across there. Grab a parameter, uh, turn it into 0.5 should work just fine. So double click 0.5 and we got our center point. <coughs> and like what we did before, we're going to rotate that tangent 90 degrees. So I'm going to go to vector, grab that rotate component, input the T, right click on A to make sure I change it to degrees, grab a panel, type in 90, try that out. Uh, could be negative, we'll see. But by default, I'm just going to drop in the 90 there. And then our axis of rotation goes back again to these vectors that we that we called out before, right? Because again, it changes as it curves throughout, uh, throughout the whole structure and plan. So let's pop that in. Um, and we're not going to see anything because vectors by, by, by uh, default are not being actually visualized for us. But we're in the next step, uh, we'll see if it works. Okay, and now instead of drawing a physical line that way and finding a physical intersection, I'm going to wait on that because what I'm just going to do is, is a little more simple. It's a little cleaner. I'm just going to project this thing in that direction that we just found to something else, a geometry I haven't drawn yet. So I'm going to draw a line, an actual line, from our inflection point to our first center point, and I'm going to extend that thing an arbitrary distance down in the Z direction. All right? So uh, first things first, I'm going to need to find a, find a, the vector direction between there and there. Uh, so that's that's just going back to our vector two point. So I go back to my vector tab, grab that vector two point component. Um, this was an important parameter. We forgot about that. This is the center point that we used previously to draw that first arc. So I'm going to tag that one, and I'm going to call that center point one. Right, because we're going to need this now. Uh, that's the start point, or sorry, it's the end point for this vector. The start point for this vector is the inflection point. Okay, so let's follow my cursor real quick. Inflection point to center point, that's going to set a direction in space. Okay. All right, let's get my, my bearings a little bit here. Uh, so we're going to use that now to draw another line so we can go to curve, line SDL. The start point of this line is, once again, our inflection point. And the, uh, the end point of that line is not determined, but the direction is. We can use this as our direction. And then our length is uh, something that we could just set arbitrarily. It just needs to be long, because we we're trying to find something to project onto. So I'm going to grab a panel. I'm going to type in 75, something kind of big, and just drop that in there like that. OK, so you, now let's look at our screen here. We've got a line that's being drawn directly through our inflection and our center point one. And that's that's working throughout every single one of our structural sections. Okay, um, And if we zoom around a little bit, we'll see that everything is in line. Uh, a good test at this point is to make sure that you're looking at the top view. Because if there's anything that doesn't look like this, you may have a vector, uh, you may have a, uh, a rotation vector, for example, that um, is incorrect. Or one of your tangents might be off. and uh, you might be getting something weird happening up top here. But we're looking good, so I'm going to keep going. And like I said before, the next step now is to simply project this point in the direction uh, that we found over here through that rotated tangent and let it intersect. All right, so I'm going to go to vector, 
in the point box, there's a project point component. Grab that. The point we're projecting is the, the center point that we found earlier, right? The center point of the white line there. The direction is this vector that's rotated. And the geometry we're projecting onto is the line we just drew. And you'll see all these points now just arriving, right? And it's cool to look at this in the side view, or the front view, uh, whichever, because we can see now that, of course, it starts to dip up in space a little bit um, because of the, the, the length, uh, the width changes of the structure. Because of this width changes, the angles are going to change ever so slightly, giving us a nice smooth gradient. You can see that playing out here. Very nice. So this, in a way, is a representation of the plan curvature. It's related. Right? It's not exactly the plan curvature, but they are related to one another. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to draw circles. Uh, we have another center point. We can call this one center point two. To stay organized. Call that one. Okay. Uh, here's our center point. Uh, we know that our radius is going to be the distance from this point to that one or from this one to that one, right? Because we want to draw our circle through it. Uh, all we got to do is measure that distance. So let's do that. We have our endpoint two over here that we're going to need. So I'll go to math. Oh, sorry, it's in vector. Uh, go to the vector tab, and up at the top uh, in the point box, you'll see distance. So let's measure that distance from endpoint two all the way over to our center point. And that's going to be our radius. Uh, go to to curve and grab that first circle component. Um, and now, again, you know, we're going to need to draw that perpendicular plane to, from the center point, from these points. We can't just plug that in directly. So, again, vector, plane normal. Our O input is actually the, the center points. But our Z vector is the one that we found before. That's the one I, dr I drew out over here that we used before uh, to set this perpendicular. It's the same, it's basically the same plane with a different center point, right? These planes were used to draw these circles. I'm going to use the same vectors to rotate these planes that are now being drawn from a different center point. That's why we need a new component. Okay. And I'll leave that up here so we can follow the trail a little bit easier. Um, this is our plane. Here's our radius. And there's our circles. Okay. And these are going to be a little um, heavy on the screen. You know, they're going to overlap a lot and it's going to be hard to really see what's going on. But if we, if we zoom over like that and isolate it, you'll see that's working. It's being drawn right through. Uh, it's looking good, and all I got to do now is do that shattering like I did before. All right, so let's find our intersection. The uh, line that we drew back over here, remember this one, uh, that's our intersection, right? Because actually that is the line that we drew across. So we want that line to intersect with our new curve, uh, our new circle. So I'm going to grab a parameter to bring that over, uh, grab our, our uh, curve parameter to make this a little easier on us. You can put in a line too, I suppose, if it doesn't matter. Uh, so I'm going to bring that over like that so that I could zoom in. makes it easier for me to demonstrate for you as well. Um, and I'm going to go to intersect, curve, curve, like we did before. This, the A input will be our line, our cord that goes across, and our B input will be our circles again. And um, our B, our T, uh, um, parameters coming out of the B output is going to be the one we need to do our shattering. So once again, go over to, and you can refer back to what you did up top here. Uh, in fact, you can just copy and paste all that if you like. Control Z, Control V, and you can just update the inputs. Um, our C's now are going to be the new circles, and these T values are these. Okay. And if I turn everything off, because I've already done the sorting, I've got what I want. Same logic being applied to both arcs. Uh, same set of components to finish off the structure right, on this side. OK, and that's, that's it uh, for this one. But before we, we kind of close out, uh, scroll around a little bit and have a peek. Uh, I think it's quite, quite good. It's quite beautiful. Uh, it's a repeated geometry, but one that every, where every single one of these is slightly different in length but they try to maintain a proportional relationship all the way across based on how we set this thing up. So um, 
I think it's, it's, it's good now to see how your parameters affect this overall thing. And, and one of our main parameters was, again, the location of that inflection point. We can go back to that, and we can make some changes there. And you can see it's kind of cool, because if I, if I move that thing in space, um, first of all, our proportions change pretty radically. But I can even invert it completely if I keep going to the other side. Right, this is about more or less where it was on the other side. So we just reversed it. Uh, that means we've got a pretty strong solution set here. It's tough to break. Uh, it works all the way around. Let's make sure that's true all the way uh, in case it doesn't break back there. Yeah, everything looks pretty good. And the other thing that's kind of nice about this is if I wanted to, I can use um, the, the setup here to, to form a, a, a gradient transformation. So what if I wanted the small one on the left and the right one on the right to actually invert by the time it gets to the other side. So what if these start to gradually start to go from left to right all the way to right to left? I can do that just by simply um, making a range, uh, a domain from 0 0.25, let's say, to 0 0.75 and inputting that into this. All right, because here I've got 36 values. Now oh, what the hell, while I'm here, might as well do it for you. Uh, if, you're if you're interested, uh, why don't we make a, a range, uh, and I'm going to input a custom domain into this. Uh, the number of this is going to be the number of the number of curves I have, so I'm going to measure that that list length, okay, like that. And now my uh, let's do this. Copy and paste that in there. And uh, to be clever about it, I guess what I'll do is subtract this from one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put an expression on this so that it's proportional. So one minus x. So I get the opposite basically of that. Okay. And let's make sure I have enough values. Okay. So I have to kind of make this x minus one to make sure I don't overshoot it. And if I plug that in, I should get something interesting here. Yeah. So now we've inverted from one side to the other. This is pretty nice. So on this side, the uh, the right one is the small one. And as I go down the line here in flange, it gradually gets larger, 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 larger until the right side's the larger one. Now this is not how this thing was designed, so of course my proportions, uh, I don't know, they might be a bit a bit tight over here. Maybe they're better, I'm not really sure. Uh, but the point is is that you can you can now play with, with this um, with this uh, geometric uh, method statement uh, because we've set it up for flexibility. And if I play with that, you'll see how it kind of twists. Right? I can twist it from the extreme on that end to the extreme on this end. And it twists back and forth. It's pretty nice. Uh, if I look at that in flange, maybe it's more clear. We'll see. Yeah, that's kind of interesting how that works.